Close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to stay as steadily with the breath as you can, all the way in, all the way out. If your mind runs away from the breath, just drop whatever it's running after and be right back at the breath. Try to make the mind as still as you can. We meditate this way so that we can see things clearly inside. As I say, the purpose of the meditation is to bring stillness to the mind and to bring insight. And you can't have stillness without some understanding of the mind, and you can't have any insight unless the mind gets really still. So the two qualities have to help each other along. As the Buddha said, one of the qualities that leads to our well-being this lifetime and the future lifetimes is discernment. And particularly, he says, it's discerning things arising and passing away. Well, there are all kinds of things arising and passing away. What he means particularly is things are rising in the mind, especially when greed, aversion, and delusion arise in the mind. You want to see them as quickly as possible, because if they're still weak, then you can do something about them. As they get stronger and stronger, they get more entrenched, they send roots down in the mind, and it's really hard to pull them out. So to get the mind so it can see these things, you have to get very, very still. If it's not still, it's like those hummingbirds out there flitting around all over the place. They have no idea what's still what's not still, because they're flitting around all the time. Everything they see is a lot of movement. It's only when they stop that they can begin to get their bearings. It's good that they can hover a little bit in the air. That's when they can see what's going on. Otherwise, they, they don't really know much of what's going on. And our minds are like that, too, if we're running around all the time. We don't understand ourselves. We try to be up with the world, up on, on top of what's going on in the world, but we're not on top of what's going on in our own minds. Greed arises, and we don't really realize it until it's really strong. The same with anger, the same with delusion. We don't realize anything at all. This is why I have to get the mind really, really still, because that way you can begin to see what's going on in the mind and begin to make choices. Which thoughts coming into the mind are worth going with and which ones are not. At the same time, when you're still and watching not only things arise, but also things passing away, you begin to see that when anger comes, it comes in spurts. It comes in little packets of moments of anger, then it disappears. Then it comes up again, then it disappears. But once the anger is there, it looks really, really large. It looks like it's one big mass of anger, one big mass of greed. But you begin to see, okay, there come times when the anger stops. If you can take advantage of that, then you don't have to keep running with the momentum when it comes back again. Notice it's just coming and going, coming and going, and it's not quite as large as you thought it was. But in order to get the mind to see this, it has to get very, very still. It has to learn how not to side with the greed and how not to side with the anger. All too often when greed comes, we think it's something worth greedy about. When anger comes, yeah, that person is really worth getting angry at. But these things color our minds and we go running with them. So you've got to learn how to step back. Staying with the breath gives you a place to step back. Being still with the breath allows you to see things coming and going. <clears throat> when you have that kind of knowledge, then you can get more control over your mind, more control over what at least you're going to be acting on. This is for your benefit, and it's for the benefit of people around you, too. Because if you're acting on greed, they become victims of your greed. If you're acting on anger, they become victims of your anger. Both sides suffer. Whereas if greed comes up, you, le you learn how to keep it in check. At the very least, you're not sending any bad Im impacts on the world outside. And the same with anger. So you want to see these things arising and passing away. Just get the mind really, really still. This is why we train the mind to stay with the breath, to stay in the present moment. So we can understand ourselves. And when you understand yourselves, then we can do, th do something about it. We can see what's skillful, what's not skillful. We can make our choices, and then we can make those choices last. These are some of the advantages of getting the mind really, really still. So make this a habit that you work on every day. Take some time away from the world so you can get to know yourself. Because if you don't know yourself, the major factor in your life is your own mind. And how can you be in control of your life if you don't know what's going on in the mind? You've got to be still enough to watch. So try to develop this kind of discernment, that you can see what's skillful and what's not, and you can motivate yourself so you can let go of what's unskillful and develop what's skillful. And you can do all this in time. The more quickly you can catch these things, the easier they are to deal with. So the more you can get the mind still and make that your default mode, then the better off you are.